So we're asked to graph y is equal to three times sine of one half x minus two in the interactive widget. And this is the interactive widget that you would find on Khan Academy. And it first bears mentioning how this widget works. So this point right over here, it helps you define the midline, the thing that you could imagine your sine or cosine function oscillates around. And then you also define a neighboring extreme point, either a maximum or a minimum point, to graph your function. So let's think about how we would do this. And like always, I encourage you to pause this video and think about how you would do it yourself. But the first way I like to think about it is what would a regular just, if, I, if this just said y is equal to sine of x, how would I graph that? Well, sine of zero is zero. Sine of pi over two is one. And then sine of pi is zero again. And so this is what just regular sine of x would look like. But let's think about how this is different. Well, first of all, it's not just sine of x, it's sine of 1 half x. So what would be the graph of just sine of 1 half x? Well, one way to think about it, there's actually two ways to think about it, is a coefficient right over here on your x term that tells you how, lar how fast the thing that's being inputted into sine is growing. And now it's going to grow half as fast. And so one way to think about it is, your period is now going to be twice as long. So one way to think about it is, instead of getting to this next maximum point at pi over two, you're going to get there at pi. And you could test that. If you, at, when x is equal to pi, this will be one half pi, sine of one half pi is indeed equal to one. Another way to think about it is, you might be familiar with the formula, although I always like you to think about where these formulas come from, that to figure out the period of a sine or cosine function, you take two pi and you divide it by whatever this coefficient is. So two pi divided by one half is going to be four pi. And you can see the period here, we go up, down, and back to where we were over four pi. And that makes sense, because if you just had a one coefficient here, your period would be two pi. Two pi radians, you make one circle around the unit circle is one way to think about it. So right here, we have the graph of sine of one half x. Now what if we wanted to instead think about three times the graph of sine of one half x, or three sine one half x? Well then our amplitude is just going to be three times as much. And so instead of our maximum point going from Instead of our maximum point being at one, it will now be at three. Or another way to think about it is, we're going three above the midline and three below the midline. So this right over here is the graph of three sine of one half x. Now we have one thing left to do, and this is this minus two. So this minus two is just going to shift everything down by two. So we just have to shift everything down. So let me shift this one down by two, and let me shift this one down by two. And so there you have it. Notice our period is still four pi. Our amplitude, how much we oscillate above or below the midline is still three. And now we have this minus two. Another way to think about it, when x is equal to zero, this whole first term is going to be zero, and y should be equal to negative two. And we're done.